welcome back. In this video, I'm going to continue from where I left off in the last video about creating a PNG tuber with character Laura. If you missed that one, don't worry. Just skim through the introduction to get an idea of where I'm at. You'll also need some basic knowledge about control net, which I go over in the control net for character design video. So, in the previous video, I managed to create a high resolution, full body PNG tuber with one expression with four different variations. But in this video, I'm going to take it further and use some new Control Net 1.1 models like the in painting model, Instruct Pix to Pix, and the Tile model to create more expressions. Right now, I have three additional expressions a crying expression, an anger expression, and an excited expression. I'll be showing my workflow of using various control net models to not only create the PNG tuber, but also generate new variations of existing character designs as well as contextually upscaling. If any of this sounds interesting, let's get started. First off, you'll need the control net 1.1 models, which are found here at Ilias Seal's Hugging Face repository. You can either download these one by one or if you're clever, you can git clone this repository like so. So I have my PowerShell, just type in git clone, and make sure you have the link of the model card, not the files and versions. So like that. And you can see it exists because I've already cloned it. Now that you have the models cloned somewhere on your hard drive, for me, it's at the location or the path I showed in the Windows PowerShell. You'll need the control net extension by Mikubil from his GitHub repository. So I already have this installed on my web UI. So if you go to extensions here and look up control net, yes, you can see mine is at the latest. So to get these control net 1.1 models into the web UI, you have to navigate to your web UI extension directory, go to the control net directory, go to the models directory, and then Remember all those files I cloned in? You have to copy them all the way over here, like so. I already have them in here, so I don't need to do that. And make sure that for every uh, YAML file, you have a corresponding PTH file or the serialized Python file. The second tool I'll be using in this video is this extension called SD Web UI Segment Anything by Continue Revolution on GitHub. So just install this extension first. I already have it installed on my web UI here. So yep, if you click on it, it takes me to this page. And next, you'll also need three files, which are the segment anything models from Facebook research. So if you scroll down to step two, it tells you to download it from here, or you can go to the Facebook page and I don't know, help them out with their downloads. So just click on it and the place you want to install them or download them to is in your extensions. Find your segment anything folder, models, and then SAM and just individually save each of those three files there. One last thing is this extension also uses grounding dyno. So this is optional, but I recommend using it. Grounding Dino starts downloading automatically once you specify its usage in the extension. So you don't have to worry about manually downloading this. Lastly, if you do run into any errors regarding PyCoco tools, you'll have to install Visual Studio Build Tools from this website. I've provided a link in the description, so that should be that. And this should be what your installer looks like once you've finished installing all the necessary components. The first of the new features that I'm going to use is the new inpainting model in Control Net 1.1. However, before doing so, we need a baseline to compare against. Since I want to add more expressions to this PNG tuber, I'm going to start with the base face that I left off on from the previous video, this one and try to create the star pupil look using the merged in painting model I created and have been using. So let me just go ahead and mask uh, the face. 
I have the areas I want masked out and I'll just do one generation first to see if the prompt is going through. Okay, so it kind of did what I wanted it to do, which is not bad. So I'll go ahead and do a batch generation just to see the consistency of it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the results. So, sure. Interesting. I mean, for the eyes, I would say it's... Okay, I don't know what's going on there. More or less, the prompt is being understood. There are some issues. So the next thing I want to show is how to use a different technique using control net to get better results. Before I start using control net 1.1, I'm going to remove this image as we don't need it in this location. Now that that's finished, please recall that we installed the segment anything extension. If we scroll down here, we can find it here. Let's open it up and we're greeted with this. First off, if you downloaded models and placed them in the correct extensions directory path, you should have three models to choose from. So the three here, and I'm going to go with this vit underscore b model because it's the largest and my computer can handle running it. Next, I'll upload the same base image to this area. So let me just go ahead, drag it over like so. Once you do that, the extension prompts you to add points on this image which will define what will be processed or given more weight during the segmentation process. So if you left click, you add a black dot. And if you right click, you add a red dot. The purpose of semantic segmentation is to basically mask out areas of interest to you. And if you mess up and you don't want this dot here, just left click on it to get rid of it. So see, I have no dots on the hair right now. Black dots signify the general area you want to be picked up for segmentation. Conversely, the red dot represents a negative weight, or areas that you don't want to be included for the segmentation. I'm going to go ahead and add black dots to various regions of the face because I want only the facial expressions to be changed and nothing else. So make sure I try to get everything in here. And for good measure, I'm going to add red dots to parts near the face that I don't want to be picked up. So also the neck. That looks good to me. Next up is grounding dino, which performs the object detection task for us. Let's just go ahead and click on this checkbox to see what it's all about. So you click on it and you see all these things appear. Object detection is usually the first stage of segmentation as we single out the object of interest with the bounding box. Then we hone in on segmentation using our chosen algorithm or deep learning model. For context, grounding dyno is a zero shot state of the art object detector. So it means that even if certain classes weren't trained, grounding dyno could still possibly detect that image, which is kind of insane if you think about it. Whether or not this will dethrone the industry standard of YOLO, we don't know. Only time will tell. In addition, please notice for me that once you click on Enable Grounding Dino, you have to enter a detection prompt here, or a word. For me, I want the face to be detected, so I'll just type in face here. If you want something else, go ahead and input your desired object. Other than that, I'm going to choose the largest model once again, which is Swin B, and I want to preview grounding dyno detection result and select the boxes I want. You don't have to click on this, but we'll just go ahead and see what this gives. So you can see that if you type in face, you generally get face here because there's only one person. So we can just uncheck this, it doesn't really matter. Next up, I want to preview the segmentation. So I will click on this and we'll see what we get. So the segmentation has finished, and as I mentioned before, first grounding dyno or the object detector draws the bounding box around the area of interest. Once that has been figured out, the segmentation algorithm is applied to it. White means the presence of something, and black means the lack of a presence of something. And you can see that the face is masked out pretty well. However, you can see that some of the spots have been missed, you can either take this mask back into Photoshop and clean it up yourself, 
or you can go back here and add more points. So let's see what's not being selected. Um, yeah, some parts of the hair definitely have to be masked out, like so. So I messed up a little. Just left click on it to get rid of it. Okay. And some of the ear is still being picked up. So let's just add more red dots over there. And maybe some parts of the neck are still being picked up. So more red dots here and more black dots on the face, just for good measure. And we'll go ahead and preview segmentation again. Okay, so it's changed up a little bit more. So I went back and fixed the point prompts until I got something I was happier with. However, if we open up this mask, it's not perfect. Some of the ears are being picked up. And also the eye area, the right eye, is not being properly masked. However, if we compare this to the manual inpainting by hand, this is already miles better and saves us a lot of time. Next up, we can try to expand the mask. And if we just move it up by maybe like five, we can check out this expanded mask. So you can see that it more or less solves the problem of the eyes, but now the ears are being picked up. So let's just try to toggle back and forth like so. Yeah, I think there's no way around it. Maybe we won't expand the mask after all. Next up, we need to toggle these two options, copy to inpaint upload and copy to control net inpaint. And depending on these options, you want to choose your favorite mask. For me, it's the center one. So zero is this one and two is this one. So I want one and then I want to also copy this to control net in paint as well. Next up, we have to enable control net. Since we're down here already, let's go ahead and find control net. Here, control net version 1.1.102. And this time we don't have to drag an image in here. All we have to do is click on Enable, Preprocessor, go to InPaint, Global Harmonious, and then for Model, let's also go to the InPainting model, which is right here. Okay, so I think this all looks fine for now. Lastly, this is key, click Switch to InPaint Upload. This means this mask will be sent over to the in painting, and now we're here. Before we start generating, we have to resolve one final gotcha, which is switching off from the in painting model merge we created and going back to the base model. For me, that's going to be anything 4.5 pruned. The reasoning for this is if you go to Miku Bill's control net repository and you go to issues, and then you look for the inpainting guidelines by alias feel, which are here, new feature guidelines. In his first paragraph and second sentence, he says it supports arbitrary base model without merging and works perfectly with Laura's and every other add-ons. So if we want to use this, we have to be on a base model, not a merged inpainting model. Okay, so now that we have that clarified, we can follow the rest of these steps, which I'll also show, and let's get started. The second gotcha that you need to make sure of is that you need to go to control net in your settings and make sure allow other script to control this extension is checked. If this is not checked, you won't be able to use the segment anything in painting. Keeping all the in-painting settings the same, crop and resize, in-paint mask, original and only mask with a 768 square resolution and 0 0.9 denoising. Let's go. And this is our first result. So yeah, it's actually pretty good. I would say it's very interesting. And you can see we're not using an in-painting model. This is pure base model. So control net 1.1 has clearly done some kind of black magic here. Let's go ahead and try again. And yeah, 
it's very consistent. We're getting another very good image once again. So you can also see here that the mask is showing here, which means that our mask is indeed coming through despite it not being in this in paint upload here. The strength of this LoRa is at 0.5 right now. So I want to try pumping it up. Let's just go with one and see the full extent. If we go with one, it becomes more stylized and less detailed. However, depending on what you want, this could be a good thing. Maybe I'll try to find a good middle ground like 0 0.7. Um, sure, I think 0 0.7 will do it for me. I'm going to modify the prompt a little bit because this open mouth expression is a little too extreme for me. Looks like the results have finished. Let's go ahead and take a look. Pretty nice from far away. Let's go ahead and check. So I did a few more generations and I made one small change in control net, which is going from balance to control net is more important. I found that this preserves the shape more. I'm not sure. It might be my intuition, but it does feel like that. And I found a few that I liked, which is one of them is this one. This one's also good. And at the end, this one, yeah. So I'm not sure which one I'm going to pick, but I do like the very first one. It's very expressive. Here we are in Photoshop and I'm going to open up my smart object, double click on it. And here I am. So this is my old version, my very first version I made. And then I added a crying face, so just to make it more expressive. Now I have another expression, which is going to be star eyes. So I'll create a group called star eyes and just drag in that image here, put it in that group. I'm going to make a few adjustments. Just some things are bothering me in this image. So let me grab my spot healing brush, come down here. First of all, there's one issue which is the tongue. There's this mark here. Just get rid of that. Maybe another stroke is needed. Okay. And then the second part is the side of the face here. This is also not right. Bam, it's done. Okay, that looks okay for now. I was fixing up some parts of the hair that I was unsatisfied with using the traditional method of my merged in painting model. However, even though the results are pretty good here and I'm quite satisfied with them, you can also use the control net in painting base model. It's not 4.0, my mistake, it should be 4.5. Once that's done, make sure you just keep your settings here the same for in painting and go down to control net. Here, just enable preprocessor. Once again, find in paint and also in paint here. You don't have to upload an image here. For now, I'll just keep it on balanced and we can go again and see how the in painting performs. So I in painted the seam out and you can see it was using the control net in paint. You can see control net down here. And here we go. Yeah, fine. Next, I want to introduce another model, which is Instruct Picks to Picks for Control Net 1.1. There aren't really any instructions on how to use it, so I had to tinker with it until I arrived at this workflow. So to use it, you have to be an image to image, and let's just first activate Control Net. So come down here, click on Enable, go to Model, and then find IP2P, which is this one. Control Net V11 IP2P for instruct picks to picks. And all you have to do is select the model. There's no preprocessor that goes with it. Next, you have to put in your image. I'm going to be using this image I made for fun. This image was created using the tile resample preprocessor and model from Control Net 1.1 on the ship builder, or image I created in the first Control Net video. It's a pretty powerful model for changing a base concept drastically. What I did was turn the ship builder into a Dragon Knight or something akin to a Final Fantasy Dragoon. 
Anyway, since we're taking a break from the chibi to showcase this instruct pix to pix model, we have to make sure that we're on clip skip 1 as opposed to clip skip 2, since we're using my fantasy art style dream booth model, which was trained on a clip skip 1 aka 1.5 pruned. Now let's change the settings so it's the proper dimensions and steps. So I'll also change the sampling method to what I'm familiar with, which is this one. 35 steps, 768, and I think it's 960. Last of all is the prompt. If we take a look at the original pix to pix repository, it seems that the commands are inputted to the prompt. For example, make this something, or turn this into something, or swap something with something. So in the same vein, let's just go back here and say, so make her hair red. And I'll just add in a boilerplate negative prompt. Once we have the prompts dialed in, all that's left is to change the denoising strength. So I found that 0.5 is pretty good to start with and CFG scale at seven is fine. Remember that if you go higher on the CFG scale, it forces the prompt more. So let's just start with seven. Make sure clip skip one is on, correct VAE, correct checkpoint. If we open it up, yeah, the hair is becoming red. And the second image is the control net guidance, you would say. And you can see here, it's saying that control net is enabled and it's using the instruct pix to pix model. Very good. So why don't we just use instruct pix to pix for everything? It would make sense. It's so powerful. So here's another sample prompt. I want to change this look of the armor so it's not a blue and white palette or blue and silver palette anymore. So let me say make the armor black and generate. Okay, so this is the output. The armor is not black. So it's only degraded the image quality. So what's happening here? Maybe my CFG skill is too low. So maybe I'll pump that up to 19. This should be plenty. And here we go again. The image quality has degraded. I have no black armor. What's going on? How about I'll go down here to control net and say my prompt is more important. Let's go. Surely this will work, right? So this is the result of turning the armor black. It's actually become some kind of anime caricature instead of making the armor black. It's kind of made it black, you can see, but I'm not so sure if that's an accident or if that's intentional. Maybe my model is wrong. Maybe I'll turn back to the very base model. I've switched over to the Stable Diffusion 1.5 pruned EMA only, and I'm going to generate again. And yeah, nothing happened once again. So what do we do? So there is kind of a hack to fix this. And it's going to involve what we learned earlier in this video, which is using the segment anything. So for now, I'm going to change everything back to what it was before. So I'm back on the dream booth model and I'm going to make it so it's balanced. Turn down the CFG to seven. It's time to open up segment anything again. So here it is. And remember that we have to have a base image. So it's the same image. And remember left click to add the segmentation mask and, and right click to remove areas of influence that you don't want. So don't want all that. Hopefully it gets the armor and enable grounding dyno, our object detector. You can either put in armor or person, it would probably detect it. I'll go with armor to show the versatility of this object detector. Also, I can check this if I wanna see what the bounding box looks like. I assume it's pretty solid. This is a pretty powerful tool. Yep, it's catching everything that seems to be armor-ish, which is great. Now let's preview the segmentation. Okay, so... Since this is just for demo purposes, I'm going to go with this, even though the mask is not that clean. So third or number three for the mask. And now click on this checkbox, copy to in paint upload and control net in painting. Very important. 
However, you don't have to switch to in paint upload. It's fine. So now if I go up here, remember I used in paint upload for the chibi. However, now I'll use it on image to image. I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but you can use segment anything on image to image. So let's go ahead. Unfortunately, it did not make our armor black. However, I want to draw attention to two areas or three areas of interest. Look at this image closely. This is the output. Then look at the original image. Notice that only the figure and these dragons behind her are changing. Everything down here remains the same. How is that possible? We're not using an in-paint mask, but an in-paint mask is being applied somehow, thanks to segment anything. So I believe that this has been injected somehow into this process. I'm not sure how, but it's pretty interesting. Normally image to image would change the entire image, but it's not. It's only changing our segment anything mask. Okay, so we're almost there. All we have to do is probably pump up the strength of this word. So make black, maybe 1.4. And all we have to do is change the denoising strength as well. So let's denoise it even more. Because from our observation, it seems that our denoising or our image to image is only targeted at certain areas, which is great information for us. So this should work based on all the things we've learned so far. And here we go. The armor is black. If you don't believe me, we'll go again. See, even the fixtures in the background have turned black. Depending on how much time you want to put into cleaning the segment anything, you could get a better result. Once again, another black image. So the part of the armor that's being turned black is from blue to black. Maybe I could do another prompt to target the silver area, but I'm already pretty happy with knowing that this functionality exists. So yeah, a third image for good measure, so it's working. Also, one last thing, if you don't want your image to be so baked up, you can just lower your CFG scale back to 7 and then denoise even more. So 0 0.7 and 7, and this should give us a pretty clean image like this. Yeah, much better. Let's work on the chibi again. I've switched models back to anything 4.5 and clip skip 2 with the correct VAE loaded in. My objective this time is to change the PNG tuber's face so that it retains its star pupils while having a closed mouth. Recall that Viado tube requires four different variations of a single expression, and I only have the base open mouth and open eyes so far. Since I just went over instruct picks to picks, let's try using that here. It might seem repetitive to go through all these motions, but you know what they say, repetition is the mother of all learning. Now that my image is in here, I'm going to change the sampling method. So here we go, or not that one. This one, sampling steps, 35. And I'll keep it at a square image for now, 768 pixels. Denoising, I think I should go with 0 0.6 this time. Next, let's go to control net and enable. Make sure you select the instruct pix to pix model, IP2P. And these look fine for now. Crop and resize as well. All I have to do is put in the prompts now. Notice that I'm not currently using the segment anything tab here down here. The reason for that is I want to do another A-B test for Clip Skip 2 models just to show the robustness or limitations of Instruct Pix to Pix for Control Net 1.1. So let me bring in my negative prompt here and let's say make the mouth closed. In a vacuum, let's see how this does. Okay, so you can see that nothing really changed. Yeah nothing is really working. I can turn up the CFG scale and turn up the denoising, but you can see that we're running into the same issues that we did with the uh, ship builder to Dragon Knight and making the armor dark. So it's the same issue here. Without the segment anything on, I feel like this is not viable. Okay, so once again, you can see this is what happens. 
if you turn up the CFG and then keep the denoising even higher, it doesn't seem to work. So I think we have to go with the segment anything once again. So let me turn this back down to 7 and this to 0 0.6, maybe 0 0.5 for now. So here, segment anything. Let's bring in the image. Uh, I want the face to be changed. So I want a mask for the face, just like what I did in the first part of this video. And just get rid of all the things that are orbiting it. So these neck, ears, that kind of stuff. Click on enable grounding dyno. I want face, preview, generate bounding box. There's only one person here, so it should only give me one box. Yep, great. And then now I'll preview the segmentation. Okay, so I think I'm going to go with the center one, so one. And maybe I want to add more points in here just to get it to fulfill more of that mask. So you can do this preview automatically and then preview segmentation once more. Okay, so it's better, but not perfect. Also, I want to remove the sheen from the hair. So red dots there, and this should update because I checked this box. Okay, it's a little bit better, but not quite. All we can do now is just do expand mask and just expand it a little bit. Also, I want to expand that one, one, not zero. Okay, so this is good enough for me. Check this box, copy to inpaint upload and control net in painting. So despite this saying uh, that, we don't need to switch to inpaint upload, which is interesting. Let's just go back to image to image and this should run on the face only. So it doesn't seem to have done anything. We still get the results that are pretty similar to not using segment anything. Let's go down here and force it to follow the prompt more in control net. My prompt is more important. Maybe enable these two. Pixel perfect and allow preview. Maybe turn up the denoising strength a little bit more, about 0.7. Let's try that. Okay, so now you can see that the mouth has become smaller. Maybe this is a fluke, maybe it's not. Let's go again, just to check. Okay, so it seems to be working pretty well. One thing in particular that I want to change is that the mouth is becoming more of like a realistic anime mouth. I want to keep this fairly chibi style, fairly exaggerated. So I'm going to bring in this prompt for Pix to Pix. Just closed mouth, smile, chibi, and then the Laura. So let's just go with that for now. Denoising might be a little strong, but I think it's okay. And my CFG, as you can see, is at 7. I'm not really shouting at Stable Diffusion to force it to give me a closed mouth. I'm just gently nudging it. And here we go. Perfect. I really like this. Simple gets to the point. So basically, I'm just going to do a few more batch generations now at a little bit of a higher resolution, so 1024 and 1024. And just go on and pick the one that has the best closed mouth. Remember, I can just mask it out in Photoshop right after, so I'll show that as well. So let's go. The generation has finished, and this was with a denoising strength of 0.7. So if we go ahead and look at some of these, you can see that even if I'm changing from image to image, only the face is really being changed. The background, the hair, the clothes should be pretty consistent, or they should be the same. And they are, see? And you can see that there's some closed mouths, there's some open mouths, it's not perfect because I think the denoising is a little bit too low and my CFG could maybe be higher. But all in all, I am getting some pretty nice closed mouths. Maybe I'll use this one. I don't know. I'll do one more generation and then we can see. The second batch of generations has completed. Before I get into it, I did make one small change, which is cranking up the CFG scale to 8.5 whereas it was seven before, like that. Okay, so let's take a look at the grid now. 
by changing the CFG scale to be larger, you can see that our generations more closely adhere to the prompt. They're all like pretty fine as long as it has a closed mouth. This one looks pretty funny, so I might go with this one. Hmm. Starting to look like the colon three face. I, I think that's what I would say it is. Yeah, I think colon three is the winner here. Oh yeah, this one. Now that I have my chosen image, which is this one, it's time to upscale. Please recall that I applied image to image at a resolution of 1024 square pixels. And I need at least two times that resolution to fit in my expression smart object in Photoshop. Normally, I could just take this image into the default upscaler in the extras tab here and just set my upscaler to whatever I want. Usually I use that one, ultra mix balanced. However, I think it's a good chance to showcase what the new tile model in ControlNet 1.1 can actually do. So let's get to that. As I mentioned previously, the last new control net model I want to introduce is the tile model, which has a few applications. You can use this normally in text to image control net to get a variation of an existing image. However, you can also use it as an upscaler. For reference, let's go ahead and take a look at the tile model GitHub issue on Miku Bill's control net extension repository. So I'll click on this and go down to the finished tile model is released. It's opened by Ilias Feel, the main developer slash creator of ControlNet. In the thread, there are some examples showcased by him as well as by other users. You can kind of see what's going on, and I suggest you to take a closer look on your own to really understand what's going on here. As we can see here, the first application of the tile model is getting different variations of an image. In this series of images, you have Iliasville take a CG render of a halo-ish exoskeleton and generate a medieval armor version. So I'll go ahead and try to replicate that for the shipbuilder image I showed earlier in this video. Here I am in the web UI on the text to image page. I switch back to my fantasy art style model for this which means that I need the correct VAE and clip skip. So VAE is just 1.5 prune and clip skip of one. Now I'll go ahead and enable control net. So click on that tab and I'll need my original ship builder image that I created in the first control net video. So here it is, enable preprocessor, change it to tile resample. And for the model, you'll need the tile model. So it's this one. Okay, that looks fine for now. Depending on our output, we'll have to change the control weight and maybe some of these control modes. Next up is entering the prompts. So this is the prompt that I'm using, DB Fantasy Art, and I also need my boilerplate negative prompt here. Sampling method, that 35. And I think I'm on 768 by 960, hopefully. And yeah, that looks fine for now. We can go ahead and generate then. At first glance, you might think that this control net model is pretty experimental or it's not working well. However, all we have to do is make a few small changes. First, I'll up the sampling steps to around 50 and we can just go down here to our control mode and tell it that our prompt is more important. Let's give these new settings a try. The generation has finished and this is the output. This is pretty cool and it's changed our original shipbuilder into this armored skeleton dragon knight. And you can see that the pose is not replicated correctly one to one. If you want to try to get this to adhere to the original pose, remember we have control net. So we just go to a new tab. We drag in the same image once again. We enable it, we go down here, and we go to open pose. So I'll just go open pose, maybe full. I've never used this one yet. And pixel perfect, allow preview, model, and I'll need the control net open pose. So this one, 1.1. And maybe I'll pull down the control weight 
to 0 0.3, something like that, and do another generation. Not on the same seed, I just want to see what other possibilities are there. And we got something new. This is also very cool. And you can see this is our control net pose. You can see that the arm is tilted inwards to the body and not outwards like in the original image, which is fine. We can always make our own open pose and change it. So there you have it. Also, for the sake of proving that this tile model is legitimate and I didn't make up the base image for the thumbnail of this video, I'll show the seed that I used to generate that image. So paste in the seed and let's go. So the generation has finished and it's pretty close to what I have for the thumbnail of this video. We can also head over to image browser. So the very original one is this image. Yeah, so you can see this is exactly what I used to create the final thumbnail for this video. Next up is showing the upscaling capabilities of the tile model. I could keep working with the new blue and silver armor Dragoon Night Woman, this one, but where's the fun in that? For the upscaling example, I'm going to go with a really old output model from one of my earlier fantasy art style models. This is what the original image looks like at 512 by 512 pixels. If you look down here in the bottom left, you can verify that it's very low res right now. So these are the minimal changes I made. So first pushing the nose in and fixing that and then fixing the anatomy of the eyes. And lastly, I added some ambient shadow to the eyes as well as this eye white here. And now you can see it kind of looks like a, I don't know, demon version of Arya Stark. If we want to do a comparison, this is the original and this is the final. So it is kind of a big difference, original, final. Okay. If we want to upscale, we'll first need the correct prompts and settings. Before enabling ControlNet and the Ultimate SD Upscale script down here, I want to head over to the GitHub issue again and look at the later comments. Notably, you can see that quite a few people mention that the model used in conjunction with the Ultimate SD Upscale script works as a pseudo contextual upscaler, like so. And if you scroll down to the last comment as of today, which is April 29th, you can see that RKKSS mentions that the positive prompt really doesn't seem to do much. Here he says quality tags in prompt have little effect, but negative on other hand seems to do more. So you can apparently add more details by using a stronger or heavier weighted negative prompt. Now that we have a clear idea of what's going on, we can start inputting some base settings. First off, I'll bring in the 512 by 512 pixel square image. Then for the prompts, I'm going to use these prompts. One moment. Okay, ultra sharp 8K cinematic portrait. And then I have this negative prompt and I've added blurry with a weight of 1.4 in front because the base image is already kind of blurry. Euler A, I'll change that to DPM plus plus 2M. And this time I'll go 50 steps. I usually go 35 steps, but when you're doing denoising, it's a good idea to go further in the steps. I won't care about the width and the height here because that'll be handled in ultimate of state upscale. For denoising, I'll go with 0 0.13 for now. And next up, I need to enable control net. So I'll come down here. Enable preprocessor, select tile resample, and then for model, select tile here. And I think I'm going to say that my prompt is more important because I want the blurriness to and sharpness to come through. And I'll say pixel perfect as well. Lastly is scripts and ultimate SD upscale script. I'm going to choose ultra sharp for my upscaler and for target size, I'll scale from image size and then I'll go up to four. So right now I'm at 512. So if I upscale by four, I'll get a 2048 pixel square image. Lastly, for tile width, um, 512 is fine. 
For mask blur, I'm going to go with 20. And for padding, I think 55 is what I used before. And lastly, I'm going to do a seams fix. So here I'll do half tile offset pass and leave everything here the same, except for mask blur, I'll have that half of the padding. So these settings more or less should work. And let's try it out. So the generation has finished and it looks like this. So if we compare with the image on the left, which is the low resolution image, this is doing quite well in my opinion. So next up, I want to do a comparison with control net turned off. So I'll just disable control net and do the ultimate ST upscale with the same settings just to see how it fares without the help of control net. So vanilla ultimate SD upscale without control net has finished. We can also take a look at that. And we really can't tell what's the difference unless we take it into Photoshop. So let's go and do that. Here I am in Photoshop. What you're looking at right now is the base image upscaled using the extras tab. So not using ultimate SD upscale or control net. Now this next image on top is using ultimate SD upscale without control net. I want to point out a few errors in this image. So first of all, you have this dimple in the mouth here. This is not right. And then you have this area up here with the eyebrow where it's cut off. This should be a complete arc. Okay, these are the two errors I can see right now. And probably over here too, this nose is not rendered properly. There should be more of a ambient depression there. So that's fine and all. And lastly, let's look at the control net model. So you can see that the, you can see that the area with the dimple here is not so wrong. It looks a lot smoother and better there. The nose is also rendered much better. Yeah. And then you can also see that the eyebrow is not cut off like so. However, there are some creative liberties that this image has taken compared to the uh, normal vanilla ultimate SD upscale, which is that if you go ahead and look, the ear area is really messed up. And then also down here on the chin, you can see that there is some um, something strange going on here, which is not right. However, if we composite these two images, the tile model and the vanilla ultimate SD upscale, I think we can get a pretty good image. So I'll go ahead and do that. So what I ended up doing is I used the ultimate SD upscale vanilla version as the base. On top, I brought in the control net with ultimate SD upscale so you can see what it's doing like so. And then lastly, I brought in the vanilla, no ultimate SD upscale, just standard upscaling on top like so, just to correct some of the issues in the inner eye and then also on the nose. So this is pretty good as a base. I can choose to fix it up more if I want, but you can see that by working like this, I've resolved the issues down here in the mouth and the nose as well. So there we go. After that excursion into using the tile model for control net 1.1, we can finally come back to the original purpose of upscaling the closed mouth chibi. Just for context, this is what the low resolution star pupil closed mouth chibi looks like. I have two versions composited together where the upper layer has a more accurate nose. So this is what I had before and this is just another variation and I just masked it off from another one. So pretty good. Remember that we left off here with the, I'm just going to call her the demonic Arya Stark. It's your new placeholder name. Anyway, we can just reuse the upscale settings here and change the model settings and prompt. So this is the prompt I use for closed mouth. For negative prompt, I'll just take out blurry. I don't need that anymore. 
And lastly, I need to change the scale in Ultimate SD Upscale to 2 because I only need 2 times the resolution. Okay, so that looks fine. Before I start generating, don't forget you have to bring in your original image. So there you go. Okay, the upscaling has finished and this is what it looks like. So yeah, I think we're fine here. Back in the PNG Tuber Photoshop file and recall that you have to double click on the smart object to get there. Now I'm going to bring in the upscaled closed mouth version. So just do that. And there we go. Pretty simple. So if I disable it, you can see this is the open mouth and this is the closed mouth. I only need the closed mouth so I can go ahead and just put a black mask on this with alt and then click on this mask. So everything is hidden and I'll just paint in the mouth with a white mask. So make sure I'm on white. Just paint in that. And you can see how it blends almost seamlessly in. So it's perfect. Make sure to have it like so. And yeah, I think this is fine for me. So we have our closed mouth and our open mouth. Closed, open. Now please recall we also need closed eyes. So I'm going to probably take this export and bring it into the web UI. Back in the web UI, and you probably guessed already, but I'm going to go through the same workflow using Grounding Dino in conjunction with Instruct Pix to Pix Control Net Model. So I'll first copy in the prompts I'll need. This looks fine. Let me find my closed mouth one. Paste that in. I just want closed eyes this time. And of course I need my original image. So let me go ahead and drag that in here. There we go. Euler A, I'll change that to DPM, that one. 35 and height and width. Let's just go 768 for now. And I think I used a denoising of 0.7 or 0.65 before. For control net, you go down here, enable, there's no preprocessor for instruct pix to pix so I'll just go to pix to pix right here for the model. And then my prompt is more important. And lastly, segment anything. So I need to drag in the image once more. Here we go. Enable grounding dyno. Or type in face here. Also need prompts or point prompts. Remember red is to reduce the influence. Okay, that looks okay. And then preview the grounding dyno detection. Yes, face is detected once again. Great, preview the segmentation. Okay, so it pretty much more or less got this mask. I'll try to remove the neck, but it really doesn't matter. Oh, whoops, I actually clicked. Okay. Okay, sure, why not? Maybe I'll expand the mask a little bit. Okay, that looks good enough for me. And remember, click on this button, copy to inpaint, upload, and control net inpainting. So it's weird, despite me not using inpainting, it still works on image to image. So I'll just go with 768 for a quick test. Okay, the generation has finished, and this is what closed eyes looks like. So, it has the idea, but it's not so solid, I would say. We might need to work on the settings a little bit more. Hmm, more denoising? Not sure. Okay, it seemed to work after I cranked up the denoising strength all the way to 1, and you can see that this is the output and this is the original. So you can see that the face is mostly affected, the hair and the clothes, not so much. Some of the hair is affected because I expanded the mask, you can see here. But other than that, it's fine. So I think I'm going to change the 
dimensions up to a higher dimension and then run a batch generation. Okay, the generations have finished. So let's go ahead and take a look. Yeah, they're more or less pretty good. Some of them are pretty good. Some of them are like butterfly eyes, I would say. Sure. Depending on what happens, we'll have to do more generations. Maybe this one's okay. Hmm. Probably this one would be fine too. So I found a facial expression that ended up fitting the rest of the image. This is what the entire facial structure looks like. However, I've set up my layer and folder structure in such a way that I have a mask that masks in only the eyes. So if I turn off this closed eyes group, you can see that the rest of my mouth and the eyes are preserved. So then we can turn this off and we can see what it looks like with the open mouth and closed eyes like so. See? So it's not perfect, but you get the idea. Okay, so now that I've cleaned up the rest of the masking, so you can see open eyes, open mouth, closed eyes, open mouth, closed eyes, closed mouth, and open eyes, closed mouth. Hopefully you understand the logic and methodology behind creating these extra expressions with the help of ControlNet 1.1 and Segment Anything. I'll be creating the rest of the PNG tuber expressions with the same exact workflow. So thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.